Hello class, welcome to lab 7, and in this lab we're going to be exploring some concepts related to vorticity and also take a look at a diagram called a hodograph. Now, we are going to cover this during the course of the regular lecture, but some of the stuff that's covered in the lab we haven't actually gotten to in the lecture yet, so we're going to go ahead and cover some of those concepts right now and then expand on these concepts a little bit later on in the course of the lecture. So, with that, let's go ahead and get into it. So. The first topic that we're, the first segment we're going to cover has to do with uh, vorticity, and we've already explored quite a few different types of vorticity already in uh, the dur during the lecture, where we looked at uh, relative vorticity, planetary vorticity, absolute vorticity, and potential vorticity. But as it turns out, relative vorticity can actually be broken down into two additional components or two additional subcategories, and that's going to be the topic for this lab. And the first of those subcategories that we're going to look at has to do with something called curvature vorticity. So remember that vorticity is just uh, a, it's just a attribute of the flow pattern that causes the fluid to spin, and something that makes the fluid want to spin or rotate. And one way that you can get the fluid to rotate is if the fluid is already moving in sort of a curved pattern. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put a diagram up here that you may remember from the regular lecture, where you have say a trough ridge system, and you have wind that's Curving around the center of the low, and then curving around the cent uh, curving around the high as it's going from west to east through the trough ridge pattern. And this uh, concept of curvature vorticity is very closely related to radius of curvature, which is something we introduced in lecture five. And the sign convention is pretty much the same. So as this flow is curving around the low, it's in producing a tendency for the air to rotate. It's making the fluid actually want to spin. The fact that the is the fact that the air flow itself is curved is what's making the flow itself want to spin. So and the sign convention is the same. So if we if this flow pattern were to excuse me, if this flow pattern were to complete a complete circle. And we would see that the circle would be rotating in the counterclockwise direction. And by convention, counterclockwise radius of curvature is positive, and we refer to that as positive curvature vorticity, which in the northern hemisphere is a cyclonic rotation. And similarly, just like with the whole concept of radius of curvature, if it's if the circle that would be completed is rotating in the clockwise direction, that's a negative radius of curvature, and that corresponds to a negative uh, curvature vorticity as well. And you'll get more into the mathematics of curvature vorticity in the other subcategory, which is shear vorticity in some of your later courses. But I do want to go ahead and mention something that's kind of important to keep in mind with curvature vorticity, and that is the smaller the radius, the more vorticity you have. So if you've got a really small radius of curvature going on, meaning you have a really compact and tight circulation, then you're going to have much stronger curvature vorticity than if your radius of curvature is very broad and very large. And that makes sense, right? Because if you go to an infinite radius of curvature, then you tend towards a straight flow pattern, which has no curvature to it at all. So we'd expect the curvature vorticity to go to zero as the flow pattern becomes more and more straight. And the only way the flow pattern itself becomes more and more straight is that the radius of curvature goes toward infinity. So a small radius of curvature will give you stronger vorticity. A larger radius of curvature will give you weaker vorticity. And the other type of vorticity that we can work with, again, this is a subcategory of relative vorticity, is shear vorticity, which is a rotation of fluid due to a change in wind speed or direction along one particular axis. And just to sort of visualize what that might actually look like, this is uh, as you go up the y-axis in, in this case, you can see that the wind is changing speed as we go in the x-direction. And then same thing as we go down the y-axis, the x-direction or the x-component of the wind is also changing speed. And that gives you this, uh, that basically just gives you a shear pattern, and that also produces its own type of vorticity. And if you want to sort of visualize how exactly this is going to, how the air is actually going to spin, what you can do is you can take something like a six, six some cylindrical object like a pencil or a pen or just any cylinder at all and then if you want to you can represent the flow pattern on the screen here by moving the top of your hand in the direction of the stronger flow pattern and you can also move your bottom hand so if you put the pencil between the two palms of your hand move your top hand faster than the bottom uh, than your bottom hand the hand on the bottom of the pencil if you move that if you if you uh, uh, if you uh, go through that motion, then you will notice that the pencil will rotate, and specifically, it rotates in the clockwise direction. And by convention, 
we use the right-hand rule here to represent the direction of what's referred to as the vorticity vector. So you may remember back in the original, one of the original vorticity lectures, I believe it was lecture nine, one of those segments we covered the definition of a vorticity vector, which is defined as the curl of the flow field. And since that's a cross product, the end result is a vector. And by convention, we use the right-hand rule to represent the direction of the vorticity vector given the direction of a uh, given the direction of spin. So in this case, if your flow is pointing clockwise, then uh, from the top-down view, if your flow is rotating in the clockwise direction, then your vorticity vector points uh, into the page or into the board or into the plane that you're looking at. And you can do that with the right-hand rule by curling your fingers in the direction of the spin, and then your thumb will point in the direction of the vorticity vector. And you can do the same exercise for the flow pattern down here. So again, if you go back to a pencil between your two hands, and then move the bottom hand faster than the top hand, then you'll get a rotation that is in the opposite direction. It rotates counterclockwise this time. And again, we define that as being a positive vorticity. And if you go through the same right-hand rule where you curl your fingers in the direction of the spin, then your thumb will point in the direction of the vorticity vector, which in this case points out of the page or out of the board or out of the plane. Again, just using the two symbols that we introduced back in lecture one. And oftentimes, there's a combination of shear and curvature vorticity in the atmosphere. It's pretty unusual to get a flow pattern that's either purely curvature or purely uh, shear vorticity. But again, you'll get more into the mathematics of this in some of your later coursework. But for now, I just wanted to give you guys sort of a conceptual grasp of how exactly uh, curvature and shear vorticity work in the atmosphere. So that's going to do it for this first segment, and in the next segment we are going to cover the idea of photographs and also uh, take a look at some other subcategories of vorticity related to photographs. So I will see you all there.